Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday night. This is our final session for this week in anticipation of Anzac Day. Now, I'm doing this slightly differently. We're doing this live straight away, and we've got a family here behind us, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how this goes. No, no, So, today's story we're going to end with is the story called The Beach they call Gallipoli. Now the beach they call Gallipoli, it's, it's a story by Jackie French and Bruce Whatley. Whatley sorry. I'm going to read it, show you some photos, and then I've got a few items to share and I'd, I'd love to tell you a little bit about Gallipoli and what it means, or Anzac Day, what it means to me being a, first off being a New Zealander in Australia, and by being, having family who have all been to war as well. So the beach they called Gallipoli. 23rd of April 1915. The seagulls swoop, the fish flap silver in the nets. Twenty-fourth of April 1915. And then the big ships came. Germany had surged across its borders and the world had shattered into war. So many countries. England, Germany, France, Belgium, Holland, South Africa, Kenya, Palestine, Egypt, Russia, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and Turkey. Turkey. War snatched and battered many places. One was a Turkish beach. Pre dawn, 25th of April, 1915. Grey sky, grey sea, grey waves lap blood-stained foam. The first fleet touched the shore. Red flowers bloomed on the white sand like spring blossoms on the hills above. One by one, men scaled the heights up thorny gullies, stabbing cliffs with bayonets. They fought too scattered to be an army now. Advance! Defenders stood on their home soil. Bullets whizzed like wasps. Fall back. May 1915. Men dug like wombats, hollowing out trenches deep in hills. They cut the brush for fences to hide for a short while from death. But death came hunting. Mortars tore through cold earth and men. Rockets like fireworks rip the night. More ships brought men. They took back crumpled bodies, soldiers who sobbed in pain. Courage and compassion grew in ragged dirt. June 1915. Summer breach breathed heat on shattered hills. Flies feasted in the corpses. Rats fed fat as puppies. Men's insides turned liquid. Disease killed more than bullets now. The imagery, the imagery coming from this book. August 1915, spring had faded. No flowers but blood here under a parched and gun-stained sky. September 1915. A land with few names had new names now. Anzac Cove, Quinn's Post, Rhododendron Ridge, The Apex, Farm and Lone Pine, forged by men who kept on going. October, November. And still they came from the grey ships, lives swept away like grains of sand. And still defenders held their hills, except one where a lone pine tree had grown. While men far away made decisions, altered lives. Advance, defend. September 1916. 
17th of December, 1915, retreat. The beach lay dark through rocket fire, crackled on the hills. But in that darkness, secret figures moved. 20th of December, 1915. The final six wore blankets on their feet to muffle, to muffle crunching sand. The night wind kissed a chill good night as rowers reached the ships. And in that winter morning, they were gone. It's the 21st of December. The beach lay empty, but for bodies, for bone, bloods, uh, sorry, but for bones and blood and boxes, waves slipped silent tongues among artillery casings. The dead rested underneath the sand. Nineteen twenty, nineteen sixty, two thousand. Bramble and thornbrush clutched the broken earth. Seagull soared once more. Now others came to weep, salute, to turn wood crosses into stone. Ten, twenty. Anzac Day, two thousand and fifteen and 10,000. They stood on grassy hills or the sand and they remembered. Gallipoli, 1915 to 2015, lest we forget. That was the story of the beach they called Gallipoli. It's a, it's a fantastic story because it does give a really good rendition of what happened at Gallipoli. And I suppose I wanted to finish off this week of sharing the stories to be able to talk a little bit about Gallipoli, a bit about Anzac Day and what it actually means to me. And what it means to the, the future as well. So as you know, being a, a New Zealander living in Australia, the, the reason why we've got such a close connection is that Anzac con connection. Anzac purely meaning the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. Corps. And this time, five years ago, I was very, very lucky to be sleeping on the beach or trying to sleep on the beach at Gallipoli at Anzac Cove exactly five years ago. And it's, it's a bit of a poignant moment when I, when I think about it because I, I, I didn't realize how blessed I was to be able to go there at that time. Now, when I did go there, I, I brought a few things with me. And I wanted to share a couple of these with you just so you could see that significance. And, and these things are, are dear to my mind. One of the first things, I, I took a, a rock from Australia, one that I gathered from the beach, one that I've gathered from the beach, and I replaced it. And I know it's, it, it's something you probably shouldn't do, but... I did. I, I then picked this rock up. It was one of the first rocks we found. And I know Brian, um, my travelling companion at the time, Brian Stokes, another New Zealander, we were lying by the beach while we were waiting for people to, to come in and to be um, marshaled into the area to be able to go to Anzac Cove. And I was able to pick up this stone. And what it's done is it's then travelled with, with me for the rest of the time that we're in Europe. And it's come home to me and it sits on my mantelpiece and it's something that is a, almost like a, a living memory of my time over there. The other piece that I really wanted to share was, was this piece of greenstone here. Now, this piece of greenstone here was, was carved by a carver in New Zealand. And 
he, Murray McGibbon was his name. And Murray McGibbon was a, a colleague of mine from Grey Main Primary School. And when he heard that I was going over to represent New Zealand as part of the 2015 centenary of uh, the Gallipoli landings, he made this piece for me. And this piece is called The Blood of the Tutuwekas. And what I like about this piece is when you put it up in the light, you can actually see all of these flecks within it. And it's, it's supposedly like that blood cord and stone from the past. And when I got to Gallipoli, I then washed it in the waters at Gallipoli, and then I wore it for the first time after that. So it's just a, another piece of sim, symbolism that I carry with me. But it's also really, really important to remember as well, the fact that there was a number of indigenous people, both from New Zealand and from Australia, who did serve for Australia and New Zealand in Gallipoli. And even tonight, one of my friends, Dan Millen, he shared a photo with me of his father, of his great, great grandfather, Second Lieutenant Pani Paroa Chamberlain. And he went away as a private to France 104 years ago, and he also then went and served in Gallipoli as well. So serving as part of the Māori Battalion. Now, the Māori Battalion, I tell you what, they have a fearsome history. And Brian and I would, would attest to this in hearing the stories from Gallipoli and hearing the stories and reading books and the history about it. Just remembering about the, the Māori Battalion, how they would do huckers right through the night. And that was one of the scariest things for the Turkish soldiers was to hear this ongoing haka. And I could just imagine being up there and then hearing that being so close to each other in the trenches. It would have been a, a fearsome sight. So thank you so much for sharing this journey with us as we're going, as we are heading into Anzac Day tomorrow morning. There is a, a number of families and and we were who are going to be heading out into their driveways at six o'clock in the morning and listening to the last post, as well as having their own celebrations in their own families that they would usually have by going to the dawn service. So keep it up. It is something that we all need to be mindful of and we need to always remember because it is our history and we can't forget it. The whole point of less we forget because what they did for us was immense. And we need to be able to do our part to be able to make our world even better as well. So have a wonderful evening and enjoy Anzac Day tomorrow.